such an asshole. All right, wanted to share this bit of wisdom in case I get hit by a truck and die and it's forever lost. I would have been able to help out people. And I'm being deadly serious about this. Um, I, I have a policy change because the environment has changed, but I want to get this out there because it's going to be probably the single one little biggest bit of advice that we can help young men going forward. And so link below are two supplemental things that will help in your financial planning. Uh, one is Bachelor Pad Economics. That's this book here, <clears throat> Financial Advice Bible for Men and Women Who Are Bold Enough to Read It. What do you mean, spend less than I make? And then um, Achieving Financial Excellence, which is a little bit more philosophical. And uh, it, it's, <clears throat> it, look, it, it's a it's kind of the the class to figure out, are you going to put in the effort or not? That's, that's the do or die. That's step one. Uh, but what I found is... Uh, Batch of pad economics is a little out of date, uh, not because of inflation or anything like that, but things have fundamentally changed that though everything in the book is still true. And if you follow and all that, um, there has been a fundamental change in how society operates. And namely, that is both men and women kind of leaving marriage and not wanting to have kids. This is more women leaving the market than it is men. Uh, women do want to get married, just not to you, not to the average guy. It's starting to look like it's exponentially skewing towards only the top 10% women are interested in. Uh, I'm not going to argue with what the numbers is and all that. But the, the point is that for the majority of men, the large majority of men, what normally gave you purpose, reason, and, and existence in life, family, wife, kids, that's gone. That's that's not on. And, and maybe it's not gone for everyone. Maybe that's a little bit pessimistic. but. Morgan Stanley, Dean Winter backs me up with the rise of the she economy, what they forecast, half the women not getting married. The fact that it's a 50% chance, uh, especially for younger people going forward, means that you cannot do your financial planning based on a society that is stuck in 1963 thinking. And tell me if, if, you, if you've been uh, familiar, you've heard this before where we're stuck in 1963 thinking we tell the modern generation to do what we did in 1963. And there might be problems and consequences like go to college and you degree, you go degree. And now you need student loan bailouts. We've crippled the generation. We destroy the millennials with that lie. And it's through their finances. And I want to say, okay, just as a college degree is obsolete, the nuclear family is obsolete or is not going to be a payoff or not the sure thing it used to once be. And even, in, I think it's optimistic, <laughs> honestly. The, the numbers of data I see and just the, the, the cultural and psychological zeitgeist of, the, of society, I'll be surprised if even half the girls get married. And then half end up in divorce or boobity boobity bobby da boo. <clears throat> Marriage, children, family, wife for you guys. That is at least not going to be on the table for half of you. And I'm going to forecast mostly like of you. And it has, I know the, the names, you can't, 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 can't get any. Oh, is it, is it 1989 all over again? Are we doing the nerd thing again? Okay. You have fun with that. This is more serious <clears throat> because college, you could say that's tangentially to like, well, you get a good degree so you could impress a girl, support a family. Uh, to, but the the number one expense now, and and it's it's baked into college costs, and that is lodging. And the paradox most young men face early on is, well, I'd like to get the girls, but I live at home, <clears throat> and so there's almost this immediate drastic financial hurdle or cost. Where if you're going to want to like get serious with a girl, you got to have your own place. And this is not in the days I remember is going back about, I remember paying $175 a month for a room. Now it was just a room. The last place I rented before I owned my first house was 333 a month. Uh, that was her studio apartment. Pretty okay part of town. <clears throat> not anymore. Um, now the average rent, mean rent, median uh, mean rent is uh 1600 No, I'm sorry, 1300 but any new leases being signed, the mean average is $1,900 a month. $1,900 a month. Now, I get a fair amount of guys. 
asking me, hey, I live at home with my parents. I'd like to date girls, but I feel kind of like a loser living at home. But rent is $1,600 a month. What do I do? And whereas in the past, I was very adamant about this. I was, this is, ladies, if you can imagine this, me and a cut handful, we're the distinct minority. I was like, you either are paying your own rent, supporting yourself in all manners or way. You're not a real man. You're not a real adult. And even in my day, back in the day, oh, the Gen Xers would get some kind of help out from mom and dad. Fine. They might pay rent. They might be working for mom and dad will help you with a new car. Oh, don't worry. We'll pay for your tuition. Well, as long as you're in college, we'll pay for everything else. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I'm starving. I love the good <laughs> These girls over there. Well, why can't you go out? Look, bitch, is your is your parents from the burbs gonna give me the freaking money that they give you? Then I can go out. Then we can go to nice places. But you know what? Here, here's my here's my check state. Here, you can look at my bank account. You will be able to track to the penny where everything went. So back then, I was like, no, it, it was it was to me it was it was the difference between or being a real man and woman or not. You either supported yourself. Or you didn't. <clears throat> and I was very economic, literal, where I said, I, if, I don't care if you have your own place. If your parents are subsidizing you, you don't have your own place. But obviously, if you physically live with your parents, uh, then people would know. I never differentiated, but uh, a girl would definitely know if you were living with your parents. And it, even then, it would bring great shame, perhaps not as much as it does now. But I was that was like the hurdle for me. You didn't have to go to college. You didn't have to make lots of money. You didn't need an advanced degree. You didn't need to work 60 hours a week. But you did have to support and have your own place and support yourself. Well, now, because the reasons in the past we're not going to get into, and no, it's not Trump's fault, although partially. Not Bush's fault. You all made the money printer go burn. Now everything's too expensive. That's the short version. Now I look at it and it's like, wow, lodging is really expensive. Tuition is even more expensive because your kids are idiots. So you keep going to college. You don't know how many times I get to you. It's a waste of time for most of you, but okay. But but lodging, rent has really gone up in price. And combine that, you, so rent has gone up and, and let's just say rent went up. Okay, fine. You still got to get the girls. And I'd be like, all right, well, maybe take help from your parents. <clears throat> or I go a little bit into debt. I, I understand tuition has gone up. It is not the cost of living that we experienced in the mid to late 90s. I get that. But here's the curveball. At least in the 90s, there were some girls that wanted to go out with you. At least in the 90s, like girls, there were cute girls. They wore skirts. They looked like girls. Some even had long hair, if you can believe it. Wait, girls had long hair? Yeah, one time they did. Oh, way back in the before time, way back, way back. <clears throat> but now, in all honesty, I can't say it. People think this is shtick. They think it's like a joke. No, not when you do these numbers. Not when you go and you look and you measure by various metrics and data and statistics. And we're talking women under 35, so this isn't my generation anymore. <clears throat> but for you young boys... I can't in good faith say, oh, yeah, you should get an apartment so you could get the girl and prove to women you're an independent man. Because there's no reciprocal interest or corresponding interest in you, even if you did have your own place. And so I've kind of done a policy change, at least for younger men, whether, you know, fresh out of high school. Don't know what they want to do. And I'm always like, OK, look, first, you're. You're not missing out. Second, okay, you do find a girl, go rent a hotel or get yourself a, a one month Airbnb or go to her place because you, and this is, this is that, uh, advice I've given years ago. It's like, yeah, most of your relationships aren't going to work out. So I wouldn't go sign a year lease for a relationship that's going to fizzle out in a month until she finds the new shiny object. Um, go to her place. There's other ways you could, you could deal with it. <clears throat> and then, but yeah, but sooner or later here, kid, get your own place. And whereas that pertained to girls, that more modernly, girls have, you know, let's say past two years, it, it's not even a factor anymore. So now the question is, okay, I'm a 20-year-old boy, young man. 
girls are not on the table or they're so fleeting and rare that you literally could just go get a hotel or an Airbnb and or go to her place and it, it'd be fine. That would still feel the most of your instances. <clears throat> You're not going to be finding a girl that's like quality and committed and want so and they're not going to care whether you live at home or not. Because let's just admit it, the dorm room you guys got. It. <laughs> Although, well, that was another time, a different generation of women. When I was in my Porsche living in basements, I got laid the most. It was good times. I was probably because I was a good dancer too. <clears throat> anyway, um, so now there is at least that reason is gone to go and get your own place. But then I started thinking about this long term. All right, half the girls aren't going to want to get married 2030. Of the ones that do get married, at least half of those are going to end up in divorce. 80% I'd have to reconsult the nurse. The vast majority of marriages are going to fail either because they're divorced or they're going to end up miserable. So what men normally would do to pursue marriage, family, women was work hard in school, save up money, <clears throat> buy a house, blah, blah, blah. and certainly as a younger man, get the hell out of your parents' place. But that's gone. Not only is that gone, that's going to be gone until you're well into your 30s. And then it's and I start doing some real quick numbers. I'm like, wait a minute. <clears throat> if you could save $1,600 a month or $1,900 more money, because that's the new rental market you're looking at. 19, let's say $2,000 a month, $24,000 a year? And now we're talking serious dough. So serious, in fact, that it has now fundamentally, fundamentally changed my outlook on how men can retire. Not that it changes again. It doesn't obsolete anything in batch of pad economics. Yes, 401ks are still the way to go. Yes, get your match. <clears throat> Spend less than you make. Uh, uh, contribute to your IRA. Once you figure out where you want to live, go buy. Consider rental property. All that other stuff, that still holds true. But the early game, the first two innings of your game, early to late teens to all of your 20s, that really fundamentally changes it. Because your number one expense over that decade and change of time is going to be rent and lodging. And whereas there is a little bit of shame in all that and living at home, that is not so much the case now. I forget what disgustingly high percentage of people still lived at home at the age of 35. It's something, but <clears throat> the the uh, shame, the tarnish, the what's the word I'm looking for? It's not as bad as it used to be. And since rent is so high, and that results in such an opportunity cost for that money, you don't get anything for rent, by the way, in case you were wondering, you don't. I'm thinking, man, you might as well, in that first stage of adulthood, live at home as long as you, not as long as you possibly can. Don't stay there till you're 40. Don't be some 34-year-old, I need a student loan bail, I live with my parents. Don't be that bad. <clears throat> but man, if you can do it for five years, do it until you're stable, you can make a lot of money. You could save up a lot of money. You don't even have to go to college. Like if you go trucking, CDL, you go work to full-time jobs, you start off $15 an hour. Again, you don't need it. You don't even need certification. You don't need qualifications. <clears throat> you go work uh, $15 an hour at uh, whatever, a restaurant, and then you work $15 an hour at another restaurant. It's going to be tiring, going to be tough. Or maybe just 60 hours a week, and you just, okay, you toss your parents a little money, you help out with groceries, keep your room clean, keep quiet, and you don't have to pay $2,000 a month in utilities. Let, let's round it up to $2,000 when we consider utilities, but you help out your folks with some of the bills. You pay for your groceries. You keep it, mow the yard, pa 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 Don't be a pain in the ass. And you start squirreling away 2000 a month and your taxes aren't going to be that high because you don't have rent. I mean, your, your, your tax rate ain't going to be that high. Hang on. Let me do some actual numbers here. <clears throat> Let's say 1500 a month net tax times 12. That's 18,000 in a year. So to 25, right? I mean, I was thinking five years, 23. That's so young. I mean, who are you, Aaron Clary, buying your first property at 24 without parents' help? Because who do you think you are? That, <clears throat> that's, super, that's Tony Stark League, and Tony Stark had rich parents. Let's go seven. Let's go to your 25, right? 
is $126,000. If you toss that, and that that's if you didn't do anything with it. Hang on. <clears throat> Let me do some, just some real quick math here. Let me do some real quick math. All right, we're talking $1,500 times 12. Okay, that's 18,000. Okay, so that's 18. Let's just call that 20. Toss a little bit. I'm going to do really back a napkin math here. You get a net, net, you get a 9% rate of return to one, two, three, four, five. No, that's not right. 1.09. Is there a to the power? 1.09 times 1.09 times 1.09 times 1.09 times 20,000. That 18 grand, that 20 grand would be 50. You'll have way more. You would e assuming the stock market doesn't crash and blah 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 average returns. <clears throat> if you had diversified it in a well diversified invested in a diversified portfolio, you'd have two hundred thousand dollars in today's money. I backed out the inflation on that one. Of course, this assumes the stock market goes up. You some have some kind of investment. And I'm just thinking, you're 25. I know you guys think that's the end of the world. Oh my God, I'm old. No, no, the world ain't going to treat you like an adult even at that age. But you'll be 25 with $200,000 cash or the modern day purchasing power equivalent. Now you could get a house. You put a hefty down payment on a house. Now you could, now you're squirt, you're safe for retirement. You're, you're done. In seven years, if you take that 200,000 at the age of 25, you toss it into a retirement fund. <clears throat> Hang on, let me do it. Let me do it. I, I know, I just know by the math. Boy, I hit on something here, guys. I'm glad I did this before I hit a, got hit by a truck. Uh, exponential math calculator. Let me do this. Okay. Uh, to the... Why can't it just... <clears throat> All right. Let's do 1.09. You're 25. 40 years until you retire to the 40th. 31. So you have, okay, you have 200,000 times 31, $6.2 million. By the time you retire. And, and that isn't like, you've got to contribute to your 401k or IRA. Like all the, like you do that. You do that. <clears throat> and parents, if you're kind enough to let your kid live at home, if you kids just live at home, work two part-time, put two jobs, all right, or just six hours, and you save, you squirrel away $1,500 a month that you would have spent on rent, net of tax, into an average returning fund. By the time you're 25, you have 200000 and by the time you, and then you stop, there's no more contributing. I know you ought to just, just had a good habit and all that. You don't throw any more money into the, into your retirement fund or your stock for, portfolio or whatever. You'll have 6.2 million by the time you're 65 for adjusted for inflation. Your retirement is done. You're done. You're not even 30 and you're on track to being a real no joke millionaire. You're done. And the only thing, <clears throat> the only thing you have to do is not fall for the, for it's not even a trick or the canard, but the obsoleted advice, the outdated advice that, well, you got to get your own place to impress the girls. Do you see what girls are costing you? Do you, do you, the early retirement is what they're costing, a luxurious retirement is what they're costing you. And <clears throat> at least back in the day, yeah, there was the, you know, there was a time, man, I was banging them out. About one a month. That still ain't worth fifteen hundred bucks. You can get one a month for five hundred dollars a month. <laughs> and so nowadays, especially with rent prices being what they are, moving out of your house is a horrifically uh, inefficient way to pursue girls. It is a tremendous waste of money. 
And whereas back in the day, <clears throat> right, when when a crappy studio, one bedroom or whatever was like three to five hundred dollars, okay. Yeah, you could afford your own place, even adjusted for inflation. Now, no, no. And so I'm changing my policy <clears throat> and I'm declaring that there's a new route to retirement for men. Women too, if you wanted to save your money. I mean, it, math is the same for both men and women. It's just you girls don't want to listen. You want your Chanel handbags for 5,000 bucks. Okay, have fun with that. You guys should live at home until about, until like you start making really good money, okay? You don't have to go to college right away, but you do need to immediately start working. You should work at least a job and a half, ideally two. Save all your money. Help out your mom. Help out your dad. <clears throat> help out with the groceries and, and ask her, hey, you show them this video. Show it. Like, hey, mom, dad, your son won't be coming to live back at home with you at 42. Okay? Like some generation we know. <clears throat> and so you let them live at home under the clear understanding. And you can help them out. Say, like we're setting up the account through whatever, TDA, Ameritrade, Vanguard, wherever you want to go. You squirrel away that money. You put it into a good diversified portfolio. 25 years old. Now the kid is set for life. Set for life. And your kids don't touch it. You don't touch it. But by that time, <clears throat> okay, fine. You're in, You're working. You're squirreling away, saving the money. All right, maybe you find college. Maybe you find a program you want to go to. Maybe you're a truck driver. Heck, truck driver would be great. You're not even at home half the time. Mom and dad just hold your crap for you. And you're going to come out so far ahead of these college-educated idiots and morons. Those fools who go to college. And then on top of it, how college students are so dumb. How dumb are they? They're so dumb. They actually think they're smart because they went to college. Well, that's pretty dumb. <clears throat> and because of this, because rent is like so expensive, you just stay at home, you, you squirrel away the money. We now have made lemonade out of lemons. There is a huge opportunity. A new retirement plan. This is the easiest retirement plan I could possibly think of. And it kind of like, I bet I didn't think about it. And I'm like, I will come out and create the newest, greatest retirement plan. And then lightning stroke, a struck, and I held a beaker up and then I laughed maniacally. It wasn't that. I didn't create it in the lab. I just realized like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. The only reason you would do that is to get the girls. The girls really don't want anything to do with the average guy. And you guys shouldn't have your own. It's like... This is a no-brainer. This is a slam dunk. Oh, and coincidentally, you could be like that guy. That's a picture from the old days in Kansas, I guess. <clears throat> Some young bachelor hanging out with his two dogs on his patio in his house. You could be a 30-year-old dude with a house that's probably halfway paid off, chilling out, doing your thing. And you know what? With If you're that financially stable, you don't tell girls to get the money. But if you're that financially stable, you got a house? Like, going in the future, the guy owns his own home. Girls are going to notice that. You're like, oh, wait, you own your own home? And long term, I don't think this will impair your ability to get the girls in part because they didn't want you to begin with anyway. But if they are going to want you, home ownership is kind of rare now, isn't it, ladies? Yeah, if a guy says he owns his own home, do your, do your ears perk up? Not because you're financially greedy or anything like that, but it shows a little bit of responsibility. And I think every guy in the comments section will tell you who's older. Man, did me and, and my peer group and every other guy in the past piss away their time and money in their teens and 20s chasing girls. You're not missing anything. You're really not. Yes, you might have the rare success. You still will have the rare success if you occasionally ask a girl out. <clears throat> and she says, well, what are you doing? Oh, I live at home with my parents. All right. So instead of the relationship lasting two months, it lasted a month. It wasn't going to last that long anyway. But instead of like dumb schmucks like us who pissed away all of our money on rent, not to mention going out and parking fees and all that other stuff, you you just stayed at home, put your nose to the grind, squirreled away your money, didn't pay egregious amounts of rent, and now you're set for retirement by the age of 25. And then, then that's about the time you should start looking for a girl anyway. I'm not saying don't ask out girls or anything like that. Obviously not. I mean, if there's a girl, you might like a girl. You know, you, she might like you. But 
it's not until you're 25 or you like even starting to come on the radar of girls in terms of something more than maybe short term. But, but maybe you just want to be short term, which then it, you shouldn't definitely get a you shouldn't get a, an apartment if it's all going to be short term. But 25, I was like, yeah, you're in the market for a house. But I, I, I was just more compelled. So there's the new retirement plan. It's something everybody can do. Dad, mom, <clears throat> watch this guy's video. No, the girls. Are, oh, by the way, mom, I know you think women are just the most amazing thing. Well, we were like that when we were girls. Yeah, that was 1978. Okay, things a little different now. I, hey, you want to help out your son or your daughter? You want so they ne they leave at 25 and they never come. And then, but they love you a lot because you actually helped them out by not charging them rent. But you made sure they put that money into a four and now 401k and uh, an index investing fund. There you go. Support them on this. And then at 25, they go away. Maybe they have a nice little house of their own. Buy some property or real estate. <clears throat> build on it later. And they're millionaires by 40. I don't know. You want that for your kids? But you, uh, you got to go to college. You have to pick a degree. It's going to be a miserable failure if you don't go to college. Yeah, you parents need a swift kick in the ass. And you parents should probably get this book, Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major. Sadly, the parents need to read this more than the kids do nowadays. Had another guy with parents like are forcing me to go to college. Are they forcing you? Oh. So you are financially dependent upon them. They pay for things. That means you can pay me more. I do like adjust the price based on like, you know, ah, oh, this guy's destitute. He needs my help. All right. We'll, we'll lower the price. My I'm 27 and my parents won't let me take the car out. That'll be $1,000, please. Why are you expensive? Because you're not ultimately the one who's going to be paying this. So there you go. Uh, as always, with all my advice, it helps out to get it younger than 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 later. If you kindly would share this with young people, link below is Bachelor Pad Economics. That's a great book for everyone to read and learn about because that'll help you manage your finances real good, and you won't be some thirty-eight year old. I need some money. I need a bill on it, Mom, Dad, I want to live at home. My career as an internet influencer didn't pay off, Dad. <laughs> do you want that? Or do you want Cappy's retirement plan where everyone gets the F out of house by 25 and never comes back and is a millionaire by 40? Look at the math. So a batch of pad economics, that's linked below. In achieving finance, financial excellence, that is more of a philosophical approach to finance, money, wealth, and I would say contentment and happiness. Badge of Pad Economics is like, you, you do X, Y, and Z. Achieving financial excellence asks the question, why are we achieving and doing X, Y, and Z? And you're like, oh, that's why we do X, Y, and Z. So instead of mindlessly doing X, Y, and Z, I know why we do it. So therefore, I'm much more likely to do it. And it's like, yeah, I know. I should probably pay off my student loan debt. But YOLO, am I right? Herkadurkadur. I are college student, 35 years old, living at home, needs student loan bill. But YOLO, right? Do you have a liberal arts degree? How do you know? Because you're a moron. I are offended. Get him, society. Not saying who that is. Not saying who that is. All right, let's go to the Super Chats. Today's donations or tonight's donations will go to my poker game I'm buying into. 20 big ones. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Clary, I remember when you were a minimalist and living in garages and, and doing without. Now you're dropping 20 big ones on the big poker game. That's right. People at the VFW, they're big spenders over there. Uh, I'm going to take out Gladys and Ethel. You got to look out for Herman. Herman, he, oh, he hides in the bushes. He won't let you know he's got a flush. He'll let you raise and raise and raise. You got to look out for Herman. Don't let his fake hip fool you. Greetings from Mexico. Well, hello, PXL. <clears throat> All right. Ba, ba, ba. Wow. 
Man, the prawn people really like to spam my things. Maybe I don't have any super chats. We could have food. Oh, I gotta wake up. There was one. There's one. There's one. Scrolling. God almighty. Scott Ludke, five bucks. All you have to do is give the military eight years of your life and get a low interest VA home loan and only pay seven thirty a month for thirteen hundred. You're right, Scott. <clears throat> you could do that too. That's why I advocate to in the military. But I think parents and teachers in society lie to high school kids. So when they're 18, they're like, I could do way better. They gave me the Dr. Seuss book called, Oh, the Places You Will Go. Like, totally. And in two two years, I'll be interning making 100 k a year as, as a peace activist. Oh, man, I want the big house, bro. I need to make thirteen hundred, like more like thirteen thousand. Am I right? I think maybe Zoomers are Alpha are starting to realize the money ain't worth it. I think they're starting to, the you know, the lying flat, the jo the Josh Flukes of the world are kind of waking people up a little bit. I'm like, why would I do that? <clears throat> they watched American Beauty, probably lived American Beauty as a child. Says, I'm not, mm -mm, I'm not gonna have a house in the burbs. Maybe I want a nice little cabin with some dogs on the porch, having a glass of lemonade sitting there on my rocking chair. And then uh, Bambi comes up. Hey, Johnny, what are you doing? Sitting and relaxing. Going to go in and do some accounting work later on, but it's about it. Yeah, well, um, I made you some pie. Isn't that nice? You made me pie. Is that your kid in the car over there from the other guy? Yay, he's in prison. Oh, how interesting. Thanks for the pie, Bambi. Bye. <clears throat> w, five bucks. Is there a civil way to tell the people at my job that I don't want to be their friend, small talk without them hating me for it? Not really, no. I mean, you're going to hurt their feelings. They may not hate you for it. Um, that's part of business, man. That's part of working in an office. That's part of any social situation. He's going, like, hey, how you doing? Think of it as an opportunity. All right. Uh, I, it's not a great book, but go get how to win friends and influence people. Not that you want to win friends and influence people, but to understand people's psychology, like how sad and pathetic most people are. And they're only about themselves and they only want to talk about themselves. And if you understand that in their minds, only they exist. And it's not even about the empirical reality of, hey, we're at job. Let's get some production done and all make some money and go home. Uh, there's a human component. And it's more important than the reality component. And if you placate the human delusional moron component, everyone loves you and you're a great leader. Like, yeah, but you're popular, but the company went out of business. But at least you're popular. <clears throat> So, yeah, just look at it as an experience, as an opportunity to practice, like, you know, see if you couldn't get people on your side. That's it. All right. Batch Pad Economics, link below. No joke. If, if you want any, please consider taking Achieving Financial Excellence so you're not poor anymore. It's your first step. Uh, and that's it. And parents, please consider letting your kids live at home until 25. See you guys later. Toodles.